Hey there, welcome to another interesting video on DigiChamps. Well, today I'm gonna tell you about something that we use in our everyday life. Let's get inside and talk about it a little bit more. Well, you saw that when I turned on the switch, the light was on. Now, what did just happen when I turned it on? How did the light glow? Have you ever thought you turn off the lights before going to sleep and you turn on the lights when you return from school in the evening? How do the lights glow? Well, the lights glow because of electricity. We use electricity in our everyday life for many purposes to make our tasks easier. Like for example, electricity is used when we turn on the TV, when we turn on the AC or other appliances. Well, it is only because of electricity that we get lights in our home, offices, markets, etc. even after sunsets. Do you know that people work day and night in the electricity department to ensure that we get electricity in our homes? We use electricity in our everyday life. Well, it is very important for us. Without electricity, our life would be like nearly impossible. Even now, if you go to the villages, you'll see that People use torch as they do not have electricity all the time. But how does the bulb glow? How does it light glow? Well, you must be wondering how. It's because of electricity. You must have seen that electrical wires go above the roads. These electrical wires carry electricity that brings light to our homes. But how does a torch glow? Well, let's find out. Here I have a torch with me. Now, from where is this torch getting electricity? If you carefully observe, this torch is getting electricity from these batteries. Now these batteries supply electricity through the torch which enables the torch to glow. Now see for yourself. You can see that the torch is glowing, right? Well, electric cells are also used in wristwatches, alarms, cameras and many more devices. Wait, let me show you an electric cell. Take a closer look at the cell. I know it's really small, but trust me, it works like magic. If you carefully notice the cell, you'll see that it has a small metal cap on one side and a small metal disc on the other side. Well, this small metal cap is known as the positive terminal and the metal disc is known as the negative terminal. So now we know that the electric cell has two terminals. One is the positive terminal and the second is the negative terminal. But who produces electricity inside the electric cell? Well, electricity is produced with the help of chemicals stored in it. But this availability of chemical in the cell is limited. That is why when we use a bulb for some time, it doesn't glow. Well, it is because the chemicals stored in the electric cell get exhausted. Then we change the batteries once again to ensure that the bulb glows again. Like for example, in this, in this, this battery has still chemical left in it. Let's put it on and let's use the torch. See, it's working again. I have something interesting to show you. Well, here I have a bulb with me. Now, if you carefully notice the bulb, you can see that a thin wire is present here. Now, this is known as the filament. Now, the filament is again attached with two thicker wires. Now, these provide support to it and are made up of tungsten material. Now, carefully observe this part. The bulb has two terminals one at the top and one at the bottom. Now, this is similar to the case of a battery, which also has two terminals. Now, we'll do a small activity to light up the bulb using a battery. So champ, what do we have here? Well, here I have the miniature version of the bulb that I showed you earlier. Now, the terminals of this bulb has been attached by wires. Now, what I'll do is, I'll attach these wires with the terminals of this battery. Bravo! You can see that the bulb is glowing now. Well, now 
what is the combination between the bulb and the battery that made it glow? Well, yes, it is known as electric circuit. Now you must be wondering, what is an electric circuit? Well, electric circuit provides a path for electricity to pass through the terminals of a battery. But what passes through the circuit that makes the bulb glow? Well, it is commonly known as current. Current flows through the circuit and makes the bulb glow. Now, let me tell you another interesting thing. The current moves in a complete circuit. When I say complete, I mean that the circuit should be connected with all the parts of the battery and the bulb. Let me tell you another interesting thing. Well, when we walk, we have a direction, right? Similarly, when the current flows, it also has a direction. Now, usually the direction of current is from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. Now, the flow of current from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery makes the bulb glow. Well, sometimes you must have seen that the bulb doesn't glow even if it is connected and the circuit is complete. Well, there we say that the bulb has been fused. Now, the reason behind the fused bulb is the breakage of the filament inside the bulb. Well, a break in the filament of an electric bulb breaks the path of the current between the terminals of the cell. Well, since no current passes through the filaments, the bulb doesn't glow. The path where the electric current flows is known as the electric path. Well, let me tell you an interesting thing. Do you know that it's always good to have a break in the electric circuit? Now, you must be wondering how. Well, let me tell you. The switches at your home, the buttons in your torch are actually brakes. You must be really confused, right? You must have noticed that when you switch on, the lights glow. Similarly, when you push the button of the torch, the torch glows. Now, what actually happens there is, the switches are the brakes. But when we switch them on, they complete the circuit and the electric current passes. And then the appliances glow. Well, if the brakes are not there and if we continually switch on something, the lights will glow non-stop and that would be a waste of electricity. Well, this is the reason why we use a switch in an electric circuit. Well, I know you're confused, right? Alright, let's do an activity to make you clear on this concept. So, what do we have here? Well, we have the exact same setup that we used earlier. But the only difference is that here I have attached a safety pin with one wire. Now what I'll do is I'll connect this wire to the battery. Well, is the bulb glowing? No, it isn't. So let's try something else. Now what I'll do is I'll attach the safety pin. Here you go. Here the bulb is glowing. Now again, if I remove the safety pin, the bulb is not glowing. If I connect it, it's glowing again. What is the reason behind all this? Well, we can simply say that when the safety pin was connected to the battery, the circuit was complete and the bulb was glowing. But when the safety pin was not connected to the battery, the bulb wasn't glowing as the circuit was not complete. Here, we can simply say that the safety pin is a switch. Well, in simple terms, a switch is a device that either breaks the circuit or completes it. Here in this activity, I used a safety pin, but you can use any metal for this case. The switches used at our homes to turn on lights and other devices work on the exact same principle. Well, let us try another experiment. Well, we have the exact setup here. Now, the experiment is same, but I have replaced the safety pin with a piece of paper here. Now, let's try to light the bulb. You can see that the bulb didn't glow at all. So what can we infer from it? Well, we can say that there are some materials that do not allow current to pass through them. We'll discuss about them in details right now. In this experiment, when I used a safety pin, the bulb glowed. But when I used the paper, the bulb didn't glow. What can we infer from it? We can say that the safety pin is a metal, hence it allowed current to pass through it. Now, what are the objects that allow current to pass through it called? Well, the objects that allow current to pass through it are known as conductors. 
Well, metals like aluminium, copper, steel, etc. are all good conductors of electricity. And the objects that do not allow electric current to pass through them are known as insulators. Like for example, wood, plastic, paper, etc. Now, conductors and insulators are equally important for us. The sockets, the switches, the electric plugs are all made up of conductors. On the other hand, insulators like rubber, plastic, etc. are used to cover electrical plugs, wires and other electrical parts that people might touch. Alright, let me tell you an interesting fact about the human body. Do you know that our body is a good conductor of electricity? So be careful while using electrical appliance or something like this might happen with you. Alright, now let's summarize what we learned today. I hope you really like this video. We'll be back again with another interesting topic. Till then, take care and goodbye. Electric circuit provides a path for electricity to pass through the terminals of a battery. A break in the filament of an electric bulb breaks the path of the current between the terminals of the cell. Do you know that it is always good to have a break in the electric circuit? The objects that allow current to pass through it are known as conduct aluminium, copper, steel, etc. are all good conductors of electricity. The objects that do not allow electric current to pass through them are known as insulators, wood, plastic, paper, etc. That our body is a good conductor of electricity